Hi, I'm Mike. I'm sitting down here with Michael Norton, who is involved in helping to run and lead the, uh, what was it, the Cleveland, the, the, <laughs> the Cleveland Agile, or excuse me, the Cleveland Ruby Brigade, yep. the uh, Cleveland Agile Group, Agile, Agile Group and, the Cleveland, and the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Agile, Group. Agile Group. Okay, yep. so that's a, that's a mouthful. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, you're doing three groups. That's, right. that's a lot. So. Yeah, well, it's not it's not uh, it's not that difficult um, when you've got good help and you've got good groups. Okay. Um, you know the way we kind of run them. Uh, on occasion, we will have a meeting that is basically a idea generation meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So um, kind of like you do with an open space. Yeah, like um, a kickoff meeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we, so so Pittsburgh Agile Group is the most recent one that we started, mm -hmm. and kind of how we started that is a good model. Um, it's the same pattern we use to keep them running. Okay. So we'll have uh, at, at a venue, if it's in Cleveland, it's on, on our boat, but in uh, Pittsburgh, it's um, usually a venue of one of the members, right? Um, and we'll have a party, so there's, there's food, there's drinks, whatever. And we'll actually have a few laptops that are set up, and um, we'll kick off a discussion about, you know, what is this group about? What do we want to talk about? What's of interest to the members? And then as people come up with ideas of things that they either want to present or would like to have presented, they go ahead and key that into um, we use we use Meetup. Okay. Um, and uh, they go ahead and key the idea in, in, into Meetup, and then um, folks can kind of vote those up, vote those down by saying, "Hey, I'm interested in attending." Um, and then in, in like for Pittsburgh Agile, we have uh, a couple of folks from um, Matrix Solutions and Vissimo that that help to actually I would even say help to run this group. At this point, they really run the group. Right. Um, but they'll kind of look at the topics and then maybe reach out to folks and say, hey, did you want to present on this or did right. you want it presented? And we usually try and get the schedule out uh, two or three months in advance so people know what's coming up. Okay. And then it's a matter of just kind of watching that backlog as it starts to diminish. If you're not hearing new ideas, mm -hmm. then throw another idea party. So, okay, so you do these kind of in, these idea parties, us, you're kind of a right uh, I don't want to say irregularly, but whenever they're needed, you yeah. Know, like it's like, oh, our, we're getting a little anemic on our on our kind of our backlog of, of, of topics. So let's have another idea, and and just because so, that's a kind of a new concept for me. I, I haven't heard anybody else doing anything like that before, where you just you get some people that are just from the group together. Right. It's basically it's actually a group meeting. Okay. Right? So so it's kind of it was it's as if we were going to do an open space. Oh. But we okay. may, we don't actually cover any of these topics. We just talk about yeah. What do we want to talk about? Record that and agree that hey, we'll do these in, in future okay. meetings. And do you uh, do you, so? You're usually able to have the people that are attending run the, the meetings themselves. You're not always bringing in external speakers. No. But often oftentimes it's members of the group themselves that are actually speaking. Um, on occasion, we do bring in external speakers. Um, Cleveland Ruby Brigade is one where, um, you know, a, maybe a member um, says, you know, wow, I'm really interested in interested in uh, NoSQL database. Right. Right. And uh, we got the opportunity to have John Newmaker come in. Well, yeah. So well, yeah. So we brought him in. Um, but oftentimes, it's the members themselves that are that are giving the presentations. Okay. Um, you know. Uh, we do have again for for Cleveland Ruby Brigade specifically. Uh, I just recently made that a nonprofit. Oh, okay, so you actually have. Um, so we, we what actually know. This, uh, what, what's the type uh, of charitable business? I can't remember what the status is. It's yeah. like a, um, but but it allowed us to um, to raise some funds, and so we can actually use that to bring in speakers. We can also use that to um, to pay for uh, meals or refreshments at mm -hmm. the events. Um, so now what happens is sponsors. Um, it used to be that, a, that we at every meeting we try to get a sponsor lined up mm -hmm. to pay for that meeting's meal. Okay. And sometimes that coordination was very difficult. Now we can say, hey, if you want to sponsor, just yeah. you know, let us know. Throw we'll a few put, bucks into exactly. Yeah. We'll put that yeah. into into the into the coffers, and then we'll take care of the all the rest of the logistics. Oh, okay. Um, and most of the time, sponsors are are, are fine with that. On yeah. occasion, one will say, "Hey, I want to make sure that you, you know, make sure you mention our name. Oh, we're glad to do that." Yeah, yeah. So, with the with the three meetings, do you ever when you do these um, um, these idea parties, is it just you have the people from from uh, the Ruby Brigade? At the Ruby Ruby yeah. Brigade idea and then Agile. There's so they're they're really 
they truly are three separate groups. It's yeah. just that they're using they're using the same management techniques to, yeah. to help with them. Yep. And so your role isn't so much actively running the group. You're you're mm -hmm. kind of like a consultant. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it's really it's it's um, especially um, you know when we started taking out additional groups, mm -hmm. uh, having that. When it was just Cleveland Rubber Brigade, I had a much more hands-on involvement in it. When we decided to start the Cleveland Agile Group, I quickly realized that that approach wasn't going to work for me. It was taking too much time. And, and it wasn't just that it was taking too much of my time. I wasn't doing the job well enough. Right. I didn't feel like I was servicing the group. So we had to figure out a way that we could get kind of the group to take ownership of their own, you know, okay. of, of their own events and, and helping to move things forward. So yeah, it's really, um, you know, the group decides what they want to talk about, and I'm just kind of there monitoring and watching and making sure that you know if the backlog gets low, let's throw another party. Um, I usually kick off the meetings, or or another one of the you know the, the folks that's helping kicks off the meeting, reminds folks, mm -hmm. hey, post ideas up on the site, right. mentions who our sponsors are, and off we go. So you 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 VLE and and Lean Dog help to cultivate the new groups, get them past those some of those initial stages. Yep. And, and and I'll make sure that they continue on in a, in a way that's going to be positive and not just um, fall over and and, and just everybody yeah. loses interest. Yeah, it's interesting. And uh, have you? I, I so you got the three groups. I heard that there was. Are there other groups as well that are that are kind of new that are sprouting up out of these groups or out of, out of these? Um, not yet. We have talked about. Um, Actually, targeting some other cities. Interestingly enough, um, uh, we have a customer now who, um, and I wish I could say who they are, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> that that um, they wanted to start an agile group, right? Uh, to kind of promote this within their own organization, and so we actually consulted with them on, yeah. hey, here's how you can do it, here's how you can run it, here's how you know, here's kind of the, the sorts of ways that you can get, you know, the community involved. Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe they just launched their own internal Agile group, and I think they're actually following a very similar pattern. And I'm sure they'll find their own way. That's interesting so. how a, a user group could be formed inside of, of a single corporation. Usually, it's an entirely separate entity from from a corporate. Like they they had they had some uh, agreed. We actually talked about it being a public uh, a public group. They had yeah. some concerns. Um, they wanted to be able to share very specifically amongst all of their different uh, uh, teams. Yeah. Um, some really proprietary internal information. Okay. And but they but um, prior attempts to do something like this. Uh, I don't want to say attendance was mandatory, but the way yeah. it was put together, people felt like more than they were obliged to go, and so the quality wasn't where they wanted it to be. That was the question I was going to ask, is, is if it was an um, internal uh, user group, it's more like it's a training, and it could get, become compulsory, not, right, not, right. not well, a voluntary right. thing. Yeah, we're really, we're really trying to encourage them to, to run it as, as if it were a public group. That, mm -hmm. and, and part of the idea is that, that um, you know, uh, the folks who are going to show up because they want to be there are bringing a lot of quality and you're going to get a really good result as opposed to make everyone be there. Um, you know, you're not going to get the same kind of quality. Yeah. And if the quality is there, those who are on the fence will start to attend. Yeah, and it's it's also interesting. It, it wouldn't be compulsory, but if I'm if I'm looking at a if I'm an employee at a company and I'm seeing that, uh, like I work for Groupon, if I see certain people at that at my company go off and participate in that user group, I might maybe I'm not somebody who would normally go to a user group, but because they're going, I'm more likely to right. go. So that could also be a gateway drug to other exactly. <laughs> user groups. It's like, yeah. oh, I've started going to this user group. That was fun. Let's, let's venture into the wild, right? You know, right. Well, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, it's uh, you know to have three groups and, and you know having them run simultaneously. It sounds like it's a uh, quite the challenge, but uh, uh, it's it's also sounds real fascinating to be able to look at three different communities that might not that that are in completely different areas, right? Like conceptually, the Ruby and the Agile, both in Cleveland, but. Covering very different topics, and then the Pittsburgh group, which you know might be the same Ruby topic, but a very different community. Between these three, have you seen uh, a great deal of, of difference in style 
or approach for the attendees of those groups? Yeah, actually, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, so the the, uh, the Pittsburgh Agile Group kind of um, almost by accident, uh, one of the talks uh, ended up being a very interactive discussion, um, and the, that that group liked that so, that style so yeah. much. Um, that they've been pushing for that from now okay. on. Um, whereas the, the Cleveland group, um, we do that on occasion, mm -hmm. um, but they also have a palette for you know someone who just stands and delivers. Okay. Um, but the Pittsburgh Agile group seems to really be you know they want their sessions to be highly interactive. Yeah. So um, same sometimes the same topic delivered in completely different fashion between the two different groups. Right. It sounds almost like um, raising children. And they're going to have their own tastes and their own yeah. so wear fuzzy hats and right. <laughs> uh, and, and Celine dog hat and uh, um, and go their own way, but you know, uh, ultimately trying to fulfill the same goal yeah. of of having a community that they can be a part of. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Absolutely, yeah, I really appreciate you. sitting down to talk with you. Yeah.